With movie budgets being at their all-time peak and filmmaking technology getting better every year, why is it so rare then that there's ever a movie that's actually worth seeing anymore? Well, it's because Hollywood's sole focus these days is just to make movies that we've already seen. Take for example the new Hunger Games movie that was yet just another movie no one was asking for. The original Hunger Games series, which concluded several years ago, was not only a commercial success but also a cultural phenomenon, blending action with deep social commentary. However, the decision to revisit this universe highlights a concerning trend in Hollywood, the recycling of content over the pursuit of innovation. And this latest installment of the Hunger Games is emblematic of Hollywood's growing inclination to lean on established success Successes. Rather than expanding the original story or offering a genuinely new perspective, this film appears to be driven by the industry's reluctance to venture into uncharted creative territory. This strategy is not about enriching a beloved narrative, but rather about capitalizing on the established fame and fan base of the Hunger Games name. And that's why the latest Hunger Games movie is so boring and plastic, reflecting the hesitance to innovate in fresh original ideas in Hollywood. And more and more, Hollywood seems to want to always play it safe, banking on the nostalgia and recognition associated with popular titles, which inadvertently isn't a safe play anymore, as people don't want these films. And this movie specifically lacks any originality and excitement. The film's focus centers around a young President Snow, a character from the original series, which is an incredibly boring choice that lacks the innovative spirit of the original movies. The narrative, rather than offering new insights or perspectives, retreats familiar ground, failing to captivate audiences with the same intensity, having no real substance or meaning compared to the powerful vision the original story created, resulting in just a really boring movie that overlies on trite themes and just seems like a hollow cash cow. So why is this happening? Well, this is because Hollywood's sole focus these days is to make movies that we've already seen. And if you don't believe me, just look at the numbers. In 1981, just 16% of movies produced were some form of sequel, spin-off, or remake. Fast forward to 2019, and that percentage has skyrocketed to 80%. And just look at the highest grossing movies in the US box office last year. All 10 films in the top 10 are sequels or rely on a pre-existing intellectual property. But why did this become the norm? Well, contrary to what we've seen from painfully cringe blockbuster scripts of late, it's not due to a lack of creativity by writers and directors. It's mainly a result of the major studios such as Disney, Warner Brothers and Universal becoming increasingly risk averse, and when given the choice between investing in a brand new original script and investing in a sequel or spin-off to an already financially successful film or franchise, they will almost always take the latter. After all, it's the safer bet. However, this has led to where we are today. Theatres are empty as fans have gotten tired of paying increasingly exorbitant ticket prices to see their favourite franchises, and characters that are run into the ground. Writing continues to get worse as studios become more concerned with turnaround times and deadlines to prioritise cashing in on familiarity or simply hype rather than handling a beloved IP with care to ensure a truly entertaining product. And for a long time, this strategy paid off. But recently, we seem to have hit a breaking point. Things are no longer going to plan for Hollywood. With an oversaturation of content and more options than ever, audiences are simply not making the time to watch the garbage anymore. Even traditionally diehard fans of the world's biggest franchises are choosing to opt out of the newest installments. You can see it in the numbers. For example, Disney alone has lost over $1 billion in expensive flops over the past year. A majority of these flops had an association with the previously existing IP or franchise that studio executives considered a sure thing, and the story is similar for other major studios. It turns out when you're grossly oversupplying a demand year after year, it won't get you very far as any excitement or intrigue will slowly but inevitably die. And even worse, when you're bastardizing people's favorite characters and stories with cringe dialogue or a preachy woke agenda in an effort to cash in, you're going to lose fans' trust, which translates to money lost in the long term. And don't get me wrong, sometimes the excitement for a reboot, sequel, or adaption is there, but it's becoming increasingly rare. More often than not, we see a trailer or announcement for a new film that should excite us, but it doesn't. Even though it might be the next installment in one of our favourite franchises, or bring a character or world we've always enjoyed to the big screen, we look at it and think to ourselves, who even asked for this? And perhaps the biggest issue contributing to this feeling is franchise fatigue. I mean, you don't have to look any further than the new Snow White movie, a completely unwanted and ruined franchise. It used to be a classic fairy tale, but now because of Disney always trying to play it safe and virtue signal, has now undergone significant transformations. The original story includes themes of beauty, envy, and the triumph of good over evil, being the source of inspiration for countless adaptions in the world. However, today we see yet another remake that is trying to force contemporary political values into a timeless story, leading to one of the worst movies that's ever going to be made, a live action remake of Snow White, with Rachel Zegler, an actress who actually hates Snow White, and a cast that resembles nothing of the original story. The entire movie from what we can see so far is just another boring trend in Hollywood of reimagining classic characters to reflect modern diversity. However, at this point, everyone hates it, no one's going to 
watch this movie, it's absolutely gonna bomb. And the only people who will watch this movie are either kids or people who wanna see how spectacularly bad the movie is. As this new remake has changed the original story, which centered around the idea of true love, to now a pressing theme about female empowerment and diversity, representing a significant departure from the original tale. Prince. She's not gonna be safe with the prince and she's not gonna be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. And this reorientation has been hated universally by everyone. And it's one of the reasons that the Daily Wire's new Snow White and the Evil Queen is in fact so popular. Even though it is a remake, it stays true to the original narrative and characterizations, with this adaption being praised for its respect for the source material and its avoidance of modern ideological insertions. Even with just a fraction of Disney's budget, this movie will probably perform way better as it remains true to the story and continues on its creativity. And the trailer for this movie's success shows that audiences just feel so alienated by the modern entertainment industry's tendency to prioritize contemporary ideologies over storytelling. However, one of Hollywood's biggest missteps in recent years has been their obsession with taking anything and everything popular and adapting it to film. But just because a certain IP is popular doesn't mean its appeal will translate to the big screen. And if we look at the past decade, there are countless examples of studio executives overestimating the draw of certain properties that were never really that deep to begin with. Take the infamous 2017 Emoji Movie. In an effort to create something akin to a modern Toy Story, hoping it would be just as relatable and beloved, filmmakers at Sony instead spent a whopping 50 $50 million to create something truly detestable to audiences. The film's plot follows soulless emoji characters as they move through realms based on popular apps like Spotify, Instagram, and Candy Crush. It feels nothing like more than an empty dystopian cash grab throughout, and it's widely considered one of the worst animated films of all time. And the most insane thing about the film is that its failure was predictable since its announcement, which was over two years before its eventual release. Everything outside of Sony predicted the flop immediately. It was clear from the beginning that just because emojis and smartphone apps were popular and universally recognisable didn't mean those things could be or should be enough to carry a film. And since these elements all inherently lack depth, the story was sure to lack depth as well. And it did. The Emoji Movie currently has a whopping 6% on Rotten Tomatoes, but far more surprising than its critical response is that this film actually made a profit. However, this wasn't without Sony Pictures putting their finger on the scale for opening weekend, as Sony actually placed a review embargo on the movie only to lift it mere hours before the film's release. Josh Greenstein, Sony Pictures president of worldwide marketing and distribution had this to say on the embargo. Quote, We wanted to give the movie its best chance. What are the wide release with a score under 8% has opened north of $20 million? I don't think there is one. And the Emoji Movie definitely wasn't the start of this phenomena. Hollywood has been pumping out underwhelming and poorly thought out stories based on shallow but popular mobile apps, board games, food products, and random kiss toys for decades. And although just this year we saw films like the Super Mario Bros and Barbie blow away box office records, it was clear that the studios and directors actually cared more for these films in a creative way that many just never will. Not to mention the massive $100 million budgets as well, and the long history of these franchises providing it with lore that writers could actually build a story around. But these films aren't what should worry us. It's the precedent that its massive financial success set for mega corporations, like the Barbie movie. After the release of Barbie, Warner Brothers and Mattel announced that they have another 14 movies currently in development and hinted at a Mattel cinematic universe. And it's really hard to imagine that a Hot Wheels movie or a film about the card game Uno will get the same amount of consideration and care as Barbie does. Instead, many of these movies will hope to rely on our familiarity and loyalty to these products to get us to pay the increasingly exorbitant price of admission to theaters. And if you don't plan on going to the theaters, Streamers seem to be following suit investing heavily into shadow pre-existing properties, likely at the expense of original scripts. Netflix recently announced a $70 million star-studded pop-tart movie. Meanwhile, fresh original stories that shed light on the universal human experience are becoming more and more difficult to come by, and if studios and streamers follow this road to its conclusion, we'll someday lose our ability to tell each other stories at scale, and instead replace it with long-form corporate advertisements. And when we lose our stories, we'll inevitably lose a small piece of our sense of community and shared experience, which means we'll inevitably lose a piece of our collective humanity. And that's why the upcoming Wonka movie just seems like such a sad cash grab. Another corporate hollow story from the beloved Charlie and the Chocolate Factory turned on its head, rehashing the same old story from the 60s over and over again. With the film expected to explore Wonka's earlier life and the events that led him to become the renowned chocolatier known in the original story, which just completely dilutes the whole mystery about his past, making the magic of the original Roald Dahl narrative just another cash grab. And looking ahead, there seems to be no end in sight for this trend. Franchises like Marvel and Star Wars continue to expand with new films and series. And more and more, nobody wants to see these films, 
They're starting to bomb at the box office, making movies just so oversaturated and predictable. The current landscape of Hollywood is now just completely dominated by virtue signaling, reboots, remakes and adaptions. There is no more Truman shows. There is no more Fight Club's American Psycho stories. Instead, modern movies are just contributing to a sense of redundancy and lack of innovation in the industry. And as audiences around the world continue to crave original and compelling stories, the film industry now faces a critical challenge to balance the allure of proven successes with the need for new, innovative storytelling that pushes the boundaries of cinema.